Have you ever wondered why a company with dozens of computers can have identical systems, software, and network settings? Whether it's a company, school, or library, the computers aren't set up one at a time. They use professional disk cloning and mass system deployment software. So in today's video, I will walk you through the process of using professional software to clone multiple computers over the network. Before getting started, you should know this. Every step in this process is crucial, Therefore, make sure you watch the video all the way to the end so that you won't miss any crucial steps that might cause problems. All right, let's start with the preparations. First, you need to prepare one computer as the server, one as the cloning source, where the disk you want to clone is located, and there are also target computers. To keep it simple, I'll just use one target computer for the demo. But don't worry, I assure you that after watching this video, you will know how to deploy multiple computers on your own. First, on your server computer, you'll need to download a professional cloning program called Aesis Disk Copy. It provides high cloning speeds and ensures the security of the entire procedure. It's already helped more than 1.5 million people clone their disks and has received lots of great reviews. Plus, its interface guides you step by step, so even if you're not a tech expert, you can still get it done. You can find the download link in the description. Second, ensure the source computer has all required software and that your company's custom configurations are properly installed. Then, for the target computer, just make sure it's working fine. You don't need to do anything extra. Finally, we need to connect all the computers to the same local area network, and then we can proceed with the cloning operation. Before moving on, please follow this channel and let me know if you're interested in other topics. Okay, let's start with the server computer. Open the ESIS disk copy you installed earlier, and on the left, you'll see several modes. For what we're doing today, we'll use batch mode, so let's go there. As you can see, it's already laid out a basic workflow for us. Just click Next here. So what comes first is the copy source settings. Let's expand it to see what's inside. And there are two options. One lets you clone from an existing image file, of course, only if you've created one before. The other allows you to create a new image file after starting the service. So if this is your first time, choose that option. After choosing Create an image after starting the service, you'll need to set a storage location down here. It has to be a network path that the server, copy source, and copy targets can all access. Do remember that, because it's crucial for the process. Once you've set the network path, you'll need to edit the network credentials. Click it, and here you should enter the username and password for access. Because it's a network path, authentication is necessary. Then the system will verify your credentials and prompt you to re-enter if there's a mistake. Once confirmed, the setup for the copy source is complete. Now we move on to the copy target settings. The first setting here controls which machines are allowed to connect to our server computer. By default, all machines within the local area network can connect. However, if you want to restrict access, you can select specified machines. That way, only the devices you choose can connect to the server computer. Here, you can add the MAC or IP addresses of devices allowed to connect. For instance, let's add an IP address first. After entering it, click Save. That way, only the machine with this IP address here can connect to our server. You can also delete addresses you've added or keep adding more. Another example, if I add a MAC address here, then only that machine will be allowed to connect to my server. Also keep in mind that if you enter an invalid MAC or IP address, it won't be saved, so make sure you type it right. Once you've set up the target devices, you need to pick the hard drive. Simply put, it means choosing which hard drive on the target machine will receive the cloned data. To check the target computer's current disks, open it and press Windows plus R. Type in diskmgmt.msc to open disk management. Here you can view the disks on the target machine. As you can see, my target machine currently has only one disk, labeled 0. Therefore, back on the server computer, select disk 0 as the clone destination. This step is really important to make sure the clone goes to the right disk and avoid losing data. Then comes action after copy. There are two options, shutdown or reboot. If you choose reboot, the system will restart automatically once cloning is complete. Down here, you'll find two checkboxes. The first one, as it says, will erase data on the target disk if you check it. If you leave it unchecked and the target disk isn't empty, an error will occur during the cloning. It'll tell you the disk isn't empty and can't be written to. So, if your target disk has old data and you are sure you no longer need it, I recommend checking this option to ensure a smooth cloning process. The second checkbox is for resetting the Windows System SID. Well, what does this mean? Every Windows operating system has a unique SID. If you don't check this box, all the cloned systems will have the same SID. But if you do check it, the system will generate new SIDs automatically, so each system looks like a different machine. 
After you've set everything up, hit Start to proceed. If this is your first time starting the service, you'll see a window telling you that the WinPE system is needed. Before you start making the PE system, you can choose to add drivers, mostly disk drivers, but adding drivers isn't always required. You only need to add them if your device is special and needs extra driver support. For example, if your target disk is a RAID disk and you don't have the proper RAID driver, you won't be able to access the disk or clone it. Now let me show you how to add a driver in case you need it. First, click Add Driver here and find the folder where your driver file is, then locate the INF file. Select it and click Open. Now you can see the driver's name and path. If you add the wrong one, you can delete it anytime. Once you've added all the drivers you need, click Create to start creating the PE system. When creating the PE system, some of you may encounter that the necessary PE components are missing. If that happens, you will get this window. But don't worry, 90% of users won't see this. But if you do get it, the tool gives you two ways to get the components. First, you can download them online if your computer is connected to the internet. Just select this option and click OK, then it'll grab the file for you automatically. The second way is offline creation, which is great if you're on a LAN without internet. In this case, you'll need to have the PE component files ready beforehand. You can download them from the web in advance or ask ESA's support for help. After selecting the appropriate component files for your device, click OK to begin creation. Once it's done, the service will start on its own. The good news is you only need to create the PE system once. Next time you use this service, you won't have to do it again. However, if for some reason, such as needing to add a specific driver, you want to create a new PE system, you can do it using the Create Bootable Disk feature. After creation, it'll automatically replace the old PE system. Here you can see the drivers we added earlier got imported successfully. If it says failed, it might be because the files are incomplete, in the wrong format, or just not compatible. If so, you'll need to check and add them again. Now that the PE system is ready and the PXE service is running, you can start the source computer and begin cloning. Because it's been on for a while, I'm going to restart it now to show you how it works. When the computer starts up, we boot it from the network. Now just hang tight while it loads the files it needs. As you can see after booting, the system will automatically open Isis disk copy. On this screen, all you need to do is pick the hard drive you want to clone. If you want, you can also check the box for sector by sector copy. Here, I want to clone disk zero to my target computer so I select it and hit Start. The entire process may take some time, mostly depending on how much data you're cloning. On the software screen, you can easily see the elapsed time and the estimated time left. While we're waiting, let's head over to the target computer. Just like before, I'm going to restart it and boot it from the network. It's pretty much the same steps as earlier. The system will automatically open Ease's disk copy again, but as you can see, it won't start cloning right away. That's because the data from the source computer has to be cloned over to the network first. Once that's done, the target computer will start cloning. All right, the source computer has finished its part and the target computer is now cloning. Like before, the speed mostly depends on how much data there is. And just so you know, if you've got multiple target computers, their cloning will happen simultaneously. Also, it's important to know that with the same network bandwidth, the more targets there are, the slower the cloning speed will be. So if you're cloning on say 50 computers at once, it's going to take some time. All right, since we previously set the target computer to reboot after cloning, it is now automatically restarted. Everything went smoothly with no errors, which is great. You can now check the data of the source and target computers. They should be basically the same. So that's how you clone multiple computers over the network. If you have such a need, you can download the software and operate it yourself, or visit our website to reach out to our 24-7 customer service. And if you run into any problems while doing it, just subscribe, leave a comment anytime, or contact our tech team. We'll help you out as much as we can. Thanks for watching.